All right, here's our footer. I stubbed up a piece of rebar just to tie the bottom flue block to the footer real good. Keep everything nice and solid at the base. Just going to sweep this off as clean as I can. And get ready to lay some block. I'm going to set my block down here get it in position where I want it before I put my mud down. So I'm going to line the new block pretty much up with the back of the old block. So there'll be an even amount of space between the house and the old, and the old flue. These new flue blocks are about inch and a half bigger than the old ones. They're considered the same size, but they're about a half inch bigger. So they're gonna stick out about an inch and a half total past the front of the old flu. You can see right here, see how much farther these new ones are gonna stick out? That's so we can maintain the space between the house and the old flu, have that same amount of space between the new flu. That's why we're doing that. So we got our new flu block squared up with our old block. And if you didn't have the old flu here, then I would just square it up with the house. So it's squared up with the old flu. And we know here it's squared up with the house. So we're gonna mark around this. Put us a mark on the footer. three sides where we can see where that block goes now. Pull it up. Now you can see the good clear mark on there. Mix us some mortar and lay it back. Out right, the way I'm going to mix my mortar for this operation. I'm going to use this cup right here. so that I'll have everything in the proper proportions. Just a container. This is a two pound yogurt container. You don't have to have yogurt. You can use cream cheese or cottage cheese. Just anything. I mean, just anything works for this. So I'm gonna put one part Type S mortar mix. One, two, three parts. Good quality masonry sand or whatever sand you can get a hold of probably be all right. Three to one. One part concrete, three parts sand. I've got warm water because it's chilly today. It's in the it's in the fifties, so I'm using warm water. That'll help the concrete activate and do everything it needs to do if it's a little chilly outside there is a, t a low temp that you don't want to go below when you're laying block they make some additives and stuff you can use but i just soon if i'm not in a big hurry wait until the weather's good and not push it i want this to be as strong as it can be so i'm gonna stir that up first Stir it up real good. Get all my concrete mixed up in my sand real good. If I get it mixed up good enough to suit me. Add a little water. Just start mixing. Don't want it too wet. Sure don't want it too wet. You get it pasty and on a larger scale, you can get a better. You figure out, you can measure, figure out the proper proportion for water. 
like if I was mixing a mixer full of this stuff, I'd know how much, just about exactly how much water to add. But this small batch like this, you get it on your trowel and you flop it and it levels out good on your trowel. That's about how I like it. It'll level out good and even on your trowel and stick to it. That's about what I like, so. And I'm not a professional mason. If something needs done, I just do it. What I'm gonna do, get me a good trowel of mortar. And what I wanna do is put it inside this line that I made on the footer. And the reason I do that is so I can see that line. Put it as evenly as you can around the inside of your line where it'll come out about where you need it to there. If there's any thin spots, go ahead and add you a little more to them so it's as even as it can be all the way around. It don't matter how much you have inside because that's going to all be filled up anyway. And this little old batch that I made here is just right for what I wanted to do. Because it's getting late in the day and I didn't want to get too much. And on my block here, I'm just going to bust out these voids where they got that old gravelly mortar mix where the block was made but bust them out you don't have to but i just it gives the mortar something to catch to so i like to do it all right stand where you can see the corner it's got a leaf on it i don't want that no leaves on there i want it nice and clean so stand where you can look right down on one of the corners and that way you can line it up both ways. You can line it up both ways. And that right there looks to be just about perfect. All right, now, next step, put your level on it both ways. I don't think I could get that no better front to back. You just tap the block a little bit to get it where you want to be. So that side needs to go down quite a bit. Just tap and watch the bubble. There it is. Double check them. Make sure it didn't move on you. That's good. Good. All right. Perfect. Perfect both ways. All right, I got that first block just exactly where I want it. I'm just probably going to leave it alone. It's getting late in the day. Got a good setup for a good start. We'll just leave it where it's at and take off with it tomorrow. Another important thing to consider, I mean, this is an odd case that we're building a flue right beside of another flue, but just in case you are, another thing to consider is this. If your old flue is off, if it's not plumb, straight up and down, check it with a level, 
I'm just gonna use this short level to show you. I've got a longer level that I would normally use for this. Put it on the side of your flue, and you can see that bubble's just a little off. So if I move my level out away from the flue, it puts the bubble right. So that tells me that this flue at the top, it goes away from the new flue that I'm building. It leans away from it. So it's not going to be an issue the higher I get up with my new flue. I'm not going to be running into the side of this one at some point. Because it leans that way. It leans away from the new one. So you want to make sure of that before you start. So you don't run into a problem halfway up. Now you saw the other day I put in my first block here to get this thing started off right. Got it true, level, plumb, square, everything that it needed to be. When you're building something solid like a foundation of any kind, you need to have everything as perfect as you can starting off because that's the key. You got to get started off right like a lot of other things in life. Anyway, I'm going to start coming up today, going a little higher with this flue hopefully get up to the point of going through the wall, hopefully. Let's do it. Like I said, it's a three to one mix on this. For every three shovels of sand, and I get just a good even shovel full that I can keep about the same. Every three shovels of sand, you get a shovel of mortar. What I'm using here is just type S mortar mix. Three to one ratio. You see how that looks? All the sand is gray. That's ready to be watered down. It's a little chilly today, maybe around 50. Probably don't need to, but I'm using warm water in this. I'm gonna use warm water to get everything acting right. So that that reaction can happen and be at the right temps for it, nice and warm. Get everything like it needs to be. Have a good strong bond on these flue block. And you can, if I was mixing this in a mixer, I'd have everything figured out. I know for a whole sack of mortar exactly how much water to put. But when you're just mixing a small amount, what I do is just trial and error until I get that the right consistency that I want it. You can figure out the right formula if you want to take the time to do that. Just making small batches. I don't even do it. I just add. And the key is just a little bit of water when you get it close to the way you want it because you can get it too wet right quick. If you do that, it's not the end of the world. You just have to start all over. Start adding sand and mortar back. And be careful about your proportions. You don't want to make this stuff weak. Lose its strength. Wetter on one side, you want to move it around. Get everything mixed up. So even as we can. looks pretty good and give it the old trial test here make sure it's i like to put it on there flatten it out it gets nice and even hangs on to that trial so when you're working it it don't wind up falling off with you i like that it's good we'll use it now what i've done is i laid my first flue block on the base my second flue block but it's the first one going up and i've checked it for level right on this way right on this way and I also check the side just mostly visual and by using the level just to make sure that it's nice 
and straight both ways there as well. The next thing I'm gonna do is inside here, this is the rebar I stubbed up to tie it to the footer. I'm gonna, I mix me up some sidecrete here. I'm gonna fill this up to that first joint and I'm gonna make it higher in the back and slope it down to the front right at this first joint right here in the block. And what I'll do is I'll cut a hole out here for my clean out door. So I can clean this thing out and it'll slope to make it easier to clean out. I've just mixed this sackcrete up here in a bucket. I'm just gonna shovel it in there and shape it. Main thing you just wanna be careful. Don't move or shake the blocks you've already laid. Keep them solid. Make sure it's shook down real nice. And I only come up about a little over halfway of what I need. So what I'm gonna do is go mix me up some more sidecrete, finish filling this thing up. And when I'm mixing in a bucket, I usually, it's kinda aggravating, but what I do is put, about a yogurt cup of, big yogurt cup of water in the bucket first. Dump in some sackcrete, more water. That looks good. You see there kind of what we got? It stands up real nice. See that? here you can see it there it's almost where I want it to be so I'm just gonna massage this around make sure it's settled down like it needs to be get in that joint all the way around not so much on the front side because that's where my clean outs gonna be don't want to add no work there having to cut through even more concrete now that's not exactly how I want that shaped and sloped. So what I'm gonna do, I'm instead of mixing up more sacrete, I'm just gonna use some of the type S that I'm using to lay these blocks. So I want it higher in the back, so back here. Kind of hard to shape down in a hole. You just have to work with it. Get it shaped how you want. Also using this type S down in there instead of that sack creek will allow me to have a whole lot smoother finish than that gravel mix down in this hole. You can't do but so much. You want it to be as smooth as can be down in there. I just want it as slick as I can. Make it as easy to clean out as possible. If you want to keep a flue maintained really good, I have had one fill up from neglect. It wasn't <coughs> neglect on my part necessarily, but fill up, they start burning and they get really hot and they've caused a lot of homes to burn down so and I want to stress that I'm not telling you how to build a flu I'm just showing you how I built my flu and I don't make any claims I don't claim that this is safe or anything else I'm just telling you how I done it and if you decide to do it all responsibility is on you for what you do not me I think I've got that kind of shaped how I want it now. If you can see, it'd be hard to tell, but you can see how it slopes down to the front all over, and it's fairly smooth. I may try to smooth it up a little bit more than what it is. You can do that with some water. Just take my hand and
All right. And while I was working with this, my mortar got a little dry. So I just took some water. As an old buddy of mine used to say, shake it up. So I just put a little water in there and worked my mortar around and got it back to a nice consistency. Because it will dry out pretty fast if you're not working it. You're not using it up as fast as you need to. But I've got it back now. You see it sticks on that trowel real nice. Like I said, I'm not a mason. But I built a few things and nothing's failed me yet, so... start doing now is just hitting the inside of this block with a little mortar and keep that mortar as even around the surface of that block as you possibly can you don't get good at that only with experience so don't have more in one spot it'll hold you up try to keep it as even as you can across the surface of the block again try to lay it as close to perfect when you set it down so that you have a minimum to move it because you don't want to be say wallowing around moving stuff after you got everything true down below all right we're good And two, folks, just like anything else, just because somebody does something one way, somebody does it a different way, that don't mean it. either one of them's wrong. If it works, it works. What works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. As long as you got the fundamentals, it's square, it's plumb, and the blocks are laying level and lined up, as good as you can get them that's gonna work it's gonna look all right it's gonna work it don't matter how you get there as long as you got those fundamental things right you shouldn't have a problem and we're looking good so all right i'm gonna show you what i've done here i just took a piece of cat block and cut it to what i needed and put it right in the back. And the reason I done this, the flue liners that are gonna go down in here, the clay liners that will go inside of here to take the heat, they're set up to where the joints on those break in the middle of a block. So you have to put something there to hold that liner up where it needs to be as you come up. So I just took a piece of cat block, cut it off, set it right down in this base concrete in the bottom and i'll let that set up before i put a lot of weight on it but this will keep the flue liner breaking in the middle of the block like it needs to to come up even and for the the uh, hole for the thimble to come through the wall and the end of the flue liner it has a hole cut in it already this will make it line up correctly for those block thimble block and i'll show you that here in a little bit when we get to it now there's probably going to be mortar falling down in here as i come up with this you can't help it it just happens but what i'm going to do to remedy having a problem later is i cut me a couple pieces of plastic here i'm just going to stick those right down in here and kind of make a little catch to catch that mortar that falls down in here so that I don't have a problem trying to beat it out from inside of here later and it won't cause me a problem with my clean out setup. And then when I'm done, when I cut the hole for my clean out, I can just jerk this plastic out. We got a nice smooth surface like we want. Keep going up. Oh, 
right, ready for another block. Again, we're just gonna try to line it up as perfect as we can when we set it down the first time. And it helps if you get it lined up with a one under it as best you can before you start tapping it down, getting it where you want it. Because then you don't have to move it around after you've done that. Good. I can get out here and eyeball it. It looks real nice up and down. My big level out here. Look at the face of this. See what it's reading? That's nigh perfect right there. So I'm happy with that. Like I said, they may be masons out there, or people that know masons, people that have worked with masons. They may say, well, my Uncle Willie's been laying blocks 60 years, and he does it this way. Well, that's fine. I've not been laying blocks 60 years. But like I said, what I have built is still standing, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm the first one to tell you, you can't beat experience. Just experiences, you just can't beat it. And I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to build a flue here that's gonna keep me warm this winter. It'll be part of what keeps me warm this winter. You start watching somebody lay block, a mason that's experienced, I really enjoy watching them. They, they can use a trowel just like a, they're eating steak with a fork and that's, I enjoy watching somebody that's skilled do something that they're very familiar with. And two, what little bit of skill I've got, I've learned from talking to people or watching them work. The first main public job that I had was with a construction company. and give me a lot of opportunities to learn new things and I took advantage of all of them that I could. Sometimes on my lunch break, I would go, somebody was around working like a mason or somebody, I'd go talk to them and watch them work and try to learn what I could. Because I like knowing how to do things for myself. That's nice. It's really about as far as I can go without making it hard on myself about putting the liner in. And I want that little block that I put in to get kind of semi. The mortar in the bottom kind of get semi set up. And when you are take a break from work and you don't want this mortar to dry on your tools and if it's not easy to wash it off with water what i do just get in the sand and just 
any tool, shovel, anything else. You've always got sand around if you're working with mortar or concrete most of the time. And it's a good way to clean your tools off so you don't have a mess later. You can see in the bottom, you can see where that plastic that I put in there has caught that mortar that's fell down and kept it off of our nice smooth bottom that we fixed for a clean out. And you can see the block that I put over on the back side to hold the flue liner up in the proper position as I'm building. And I've given this uh, base concrete that we put inside time to firm up so that I can set a flue liner in. Next thing I'm gonna do is on top of the plastic, I'm just gonna fill all that up with sand up to the top of this uh, block that I put in the bottom to hold the liner for it to sit on. I'm just gonna fill that up with sand, probably up to the top of that block and tamp it in and make sure it's about level with the top of that block all the way around. And what that will do, it's not necessarily to hold the flue liner, that back block will do that for me. What the sand does is when I come back in around the outside of the liner and I put, I'm gonna pour that with concrete. I'm gonna pour it solid. Uh, I've heard people talk about doing it both ways, but my thinking is, the idea is you've got about half an inch all the way around between the liner and the outside block. And when this liner heats up, it expands. So, if you don't put anything between the liner and the outside block, the liner can expand and contract when it gets hot and when it cools off without being constricted. But my thinking is, if you don't pour that solid and the liner is constantly expanding and contracting, when that liner starts breaking up, and it will, and it starts falling out, you're not going to have anything in there. And it's gonna allow that liner to fall out when it cracks and breaks. But if you got something poured solid all the way around, yeah, the whole thing has to expand or the liner is gonna expand and probably crack. But if that liner eventually cracks and does start falling apart, you got a nice thick uh, layer of concrete between your outside block and you're inside where all the heat is. So that's my thinking on it. I've heard Mason say they've done it both ways. You know, I just that's my thinking. So more solid, more concrete. It's gotta be better. All right, folks, we've got up to the point of putting flue liners in. We're gonna have to make that part three, I guess. I just don't wanna drag these things out too long. I wanna try to keep y'all content with the content. This is Justin at Metcalf Mills. I'll see you on part three.